I spent the last day in Colombia with a migrant from Venezuela who was on his way to Chile to get back together with his family. We eventually reached the border and parted ways since he had to figure out a way to cross without having a passport. Unfortunately for me, the border was closed and wouldn't open until the next morning. So, I have to spend the night outside of someone's house. Thumbs up, everybody. We're in Ecuador. I just crossed the border. It's a brand new day as well. Uh, yeah, I'm out of breath here walking uphill in a heavy backpack and a heavy camera. But the deal is, I don't know, I just want to make it to Peru. Even though I heard Ecuador is a very beautiful country. Yeah, it's probably going to take me like a week or something. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. I don't know. It depends on my luck. But yeah. Thumbs up, Ecuador. <laughs> Back in Colombia, I had a lot of luck getting rides just by simply requesting a lift to the driver's destination. Therefore, I decided to start in Ecuador by doing the same thing. I walked to a gas station and started asking everyone who stopped, though without success. Some vehicles were full, others just didn't seem willing to pick up a stinky gringo because I smelled absolutely horrible. I continued with my attempts for quite some time, but eventually started walking instead since I wasn't able to make good progress. Yeah, this spot is pretty much the best spot that I can find. It doesn't really have a parking or anything, but I don't have to tell anyone. We'll try it. To my surprise, the amount of traffic was very low compared to my expectation, and the majority of the vehicles were trucks. But after waiting for nearly two hours, I finally caught my first ride in Ecuador. We are in uh, Bolivar, a little town here. Gonna continue hitchhiking now. Just gotta walk a bit further. Hopefully I find a little pocket or something and cardboard, that'd be great. So I can ride something, no Quito or Ibarra, anything. ¿Dónde va? Quito es uh, Ibarra. No, en realidad, do you speak English? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, I don't speak Spanish. Our place is not far away from here. We are not going to Ibarra today. But if you want a ride, maybe it's a little late. I don't know. If you want to stay in our place, we have received volunteers in our okay. home. Can I stay with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you wow. Yeah. Why not? Come on. Why not? <laughs> Okay, my name is Juan, uh, Valeria. And you're from? Norway. Norway, wow. <laughs> Norwega. Norwega. What are you doing here in Bolivar? Uh, or, or somebody give you a ride and you stay there? Yeah, exactly. I, uh, uh, yeah. I crossed the border today from uh, Colombia. From Colombia, okay. And I'm just trying to hitchhike yeah. all the way to Lima. <laughs> uh, about uh, 40 minutes ago, we, we went to the next town and I saw you. Yeah, you saw me. <laughs> yeah, I saw you with the sign, which is yeah. I think it's the best idea because yeah. I tried it for for a while and then I threw it away because it didn't work. It didn't seem like so. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, we stopped a few minutes later on a little plant hunt. Oh wow. Juan had a beautiful house located up in the mountains where he told me I could stay for as long as I wanted. He showed me around and I was surprised by how nice and calm this tiny little village was. Can you believe that I'm here? 
the beautiful house, got the beautiful view. This is a nice welcome to Ecuador. Agree? <laughs> We're making some food now as well, I think. That's amazing. Even though I was told I could stay there for as long as I wanted, I really just wanted to make some good progress towards Peru and eventually Lima. Juan was happy to help me with a good spot to hitchhike at. Do you think here is good to, uh, yeah. to catch the uh, ride? Yeah. Oh yeah, over here, that's good. All right. Thank you so much. Adios. Bye. Bye. I didn't really feel like filming too much because, you know, well, they're giving me food and shit. I don't really feel comfortable filming everything, but I'm super grateful. They gave me dinner last night and they gave me breakfast this morning. And uh, I now have two water bottles that are full of water. And uh, the plan is pretty simple. Head towards Quito, the capital city. Second car. First ride. <laughs> Second car the past. Hola. Uh, ¿A dónde va? Hasta el puente del Juncal te llevo hasta el valle. Está cinco minutos. Está. Unos quince, veinte. Veinte. Can I come? Sí. Gracias. Try to get you know to the outskirts of the city. That's what all we have. Yeah, we're in a Ibarra or some shit. I forgot the name. I ate some food at KFC. <laughs> it cost five dollars, like a big meal. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get it. Also got some money. Took out thirty dollars from the ATM. So I got some money now. So in case I get stranded in a tiny ass city, at least I won't starve. So that's great. But uh, yeah, my knees are. Yeah, I don't know, they hurt a lot because my knees are not used to walking this much with, you know, that heavy of a backpack. When I was walking from Cali in Colombia, I don't know how many days that is ago, but I walked like, walked for many hours and I did have a pretty heavy backpack, you know, lots of water, bananas and oatmeal, you know, it wastes a lot, plus all the gear. I got a lot of camping equipment, but I do not have a tarp, which is fucking dumb. Dos dólares, <laughs> $2.50 I got a ride 20 kilometers to Otavalo and then they're telling me to get a bus for $2 to Quito just like an hour do we want to spend $2? I mean it's, it's cheap as fuck but that's not a part of the game right now is it? I was dropped off at the bus terminal in Otavalo and proceeded to walk through the town to hitchhike further I had been waiting hours for each ride and it was now already 4 p.m. and I was afraid I'd have to spend the night outside in this unpredictable weather. Thankfully, I avoided dealing with that since I was picked up by this lady who, after providing me with abundant food, allowed me to hang around for the time being. His name is Black. Black? Huh? <laughs> What's up? We're back again, currently at a gas station. What happened yesterday was pretty cool. As I was hitchhiking, you know, I've been waiting for hours for every ride pretty much here in Ecuador, but this lady pulled up. She was just gonna drive me up this road, like 20 minutes or something, to her hometown, uh, Kayambe. And then uh, she asked me if uh, she could show me around the city. I was like, yeah, you know what? I ain't got shit to do. It's 4 p.m., about to get dark. I got nowhere to sleep, and it's raining, so I got no tar. Probably won't sleep at all. And then she brought me to her house, told me that I could stay there for the night, incredible. And then took me to her neighbor, which, uh, yeah, gave me a lot of food. The next morning, I woke up, I was fed again, and that was amazing. And then she bought me a damn bus ticket to here, at this petrol station. So now I pretty much bypassed Quito, the capital city, meaning that, you know, it's large cities and hitchhiking, doesn't really do well together. So now I'm happy I bypassed it, so all the cars that are going here are going south my direction. I gotta walk a bit, but yeah. So what is the deal? Try to get to Lima in a week, which is about 1,700 kilometers. I got a friend who's coming there. It's that guy who bought like 100 pieces of sushi uh, while I was in Medellin. Hopefully he's gonna be there in a week because he was actually gonna come to Colombia like three weeks when I arrived, but he missed like three flights. So actually I have no hope in him coming, but I believe he's gonna come in a week.
I caught a truck after 30 minutes of waiting, but it broke down at a traffic light that forced me to get out in the rain and try other vehicles. I just got in the back of this shit. <laughs> he, he was cool with it though, so that's great. I'm just trying not to waste any time, but I got some walking ahead of me now, I think. I'm in a little town. It's in Salcedo? I was stuck in a small town, quite far away from the highway, and the easiest way for me to get back was to get to the next small town called Salcedo. I asked pretty much every car at the stoplight for a lift in that direction for a good half an hour without any luck. So I was forced to pay 50 cents for a 20 minute bus ride. 50 cents poorer, and uh, like half an hour later of walking, I found myself still in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. There gotta be more to walk, but it's uh, very beautiful out here. Hola. Uh, I'm about to say. Uh, can I just go here? It's full here. How many is in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people are sitting in there. Muchas gracias. Actually last night I, you know, I was supposed to hit check the whole night but I got so tired and had a little headache so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna find somewhere to sleep. There were hardly any traffic anyways so the chances of me getting a ride last night when it was super late was probably non-existent. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna pack this shit uh, and then start hit checking again. I walked for an hour to get to the outside of Ambato, the city I arrived in last night. I did this to increase the chances of getting a ride since hitchhiking inside cities is a pain in the ass. My knees were in a lot of pain because of all the walking I had done in the previous days and I didn't fully make it out of the city. But I gave it a shot and got a lift after about another hour. Finally got a ride. Didn't even wait for too long. But we're going like 40, 50 kilometers down the road here. We're probably going to be in this for like an hour or something which is great. Thumbs up, Ecuador. I'm actually having a hard time hitchhiking here. It's not as easy as Colombia, but I don't care because it's doable still. <laughs> Dude, they got a German license plate. I think we made it though. We're here. Welcome to Rio Bamba. Nice little town here. I just spent uh, two dollars on some chicken and rice. Honestly, I thought I'd get a little bit more food than that. It's like a tiny little chicken wing. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna have to try to spend a bit more money now because I've spent like six dollars the past four days or something. Oh, you've been to USA? Yes. Wow. Where? Jersey. New Jersey. I flew from uh, United States and then to Colombia. Yeah. And then now I'm uh, going to Peru. Really? <laughs> yeah. Quantas horas to uh, Cuenca? Six. Six hours? 
<laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good for me. My friend Wilson just stopped to buy some bananas for his pigs. And uh, I'll be honest, it's so hot in here. My camera is fogging up. It's not cold outside. The fact that my camera is fogging up gives you an insight on how fucking hot it is. I need to video this. Put this on video. That is good. <laughs> I know how to drive. I didn't ever think I would drive in Ecuador, but... Really? <laughs> Colombia, you driver? No. I'm working. You're working? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your driver license? Uh, in my pocket. You want to see? You don't believe me? No, no, no. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Driver, Ecuador. <laughs> Ecuador Driver. <laughs> This year. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see, I see. Whoa, we got fish. You're hungry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is an absolute amazing view here of this restaurant. <laughs> Can't see that much, but you know, looks sick still. That right there, that's pigs, not pork. Pigs, eh? Pork is the meat. That's meat. You know, you eat. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why there's two words for it. Puerco. 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 Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude. <no. laughs> Alright. We're at uh, Wilson's house. Cuenca City. <laughs> Cuenca City. We've been or yeah, we've been driving for like seven hours or something. I don't really feel like hitchhiking more today. So, we're staying here tonight. Yeah. Thumbs up. So, uh, yeah, what animals you got? You got sheep, sheep chicken, dogs. Chicken. dogs. Uh, oh, ducks. <laughs> I hear them. <laughs> Wilson had multiple houses in the hills of Cuenca, and yet again, I was offered a roof over my head for the night and as usual, dinner. The next morning, we said goodbye since he had some errands to do, so he dropped me off at the outskirts of the city, which was extremely convenient because I wanted to get to Peru as soon as possible. Finding a new ride took me no longer than a few minutes, but I was driven to what seemed like the definition of middle of nowhere up in the mountain range. There was, at best, minimal traffic, yet no decent spot for vehicles to pull over. At least I could distract myself with the incredible views. A few hours went by, and I was finally picked up. The guy in the passenger seat told me to come to his restaurant for free food, and the lady owned a massive house with a pool and said I could stay there for the night. At first, I was considering not going, since it was still quite early and I wanted to make more progress, but the pool was too appealing. Of course, I had to accept. This country was full of wonders. How are we doing, everybody? I'm currently at a restaurant. How? You may wonder. And just told me that my food is ready. I don't know what I got. Anyways. She's gonna go pick up her license for something and then she's gonna pick me up here and drive me to her house. She has a pool and then she's gonna go to my child tomorrow, which is very close to Peru, so we're gonna cross into Peru tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs> no way! What is this? Rice and soup. Wow. I was honestly in disbelief. I literally could not ask for more. I got to eat incredible restaurant food for free and even got to use some proper Wi-Fi. The lady came back two hours later and I was finally going to see this big house. And let me put it this way, it did not disappoint. I'm literally lost for words right now. Look where I'm at. Check the view. This is where I'm at. We got the pool, my little balcony here. This is my uh, little bedroom. Got a private toilet. I don't care what anyone says, this is better than a hotel. And we got a pool. Oh, you have bubbles? Yeah, no, it's, it's the, the change. Oh. <laughs> Going from traveling homeless in Europe to <laughs> getting fed with fruits. 
The next morning, I was driven to Mashallah, a town closer to the Peruvian border where I would catch my next ride. It was now my final day, but I still felt like I didn't spend enough time in Ecuador and was quite unhappy with living, though at the same time very excited and ready for a new challenge further down south. My impression of Ecuador has far exceeded my expectations, and for that I am incredibly grateful. Overall, I was offered shelter four out of five nights and was given multiple free meals, allowing me to spend just one third of the $30 I drew out. I think that speaks for itself. Fortunately or not, nothing lasts, and if you think about it, that's the very essence of a journey. It's driving force, just rolling along. So, to distract myself, I shifted my focus towards my next challenge, getting to Lima to meet a friend of mine who would help me carry out a tremendous idea.